We ask the brothers uncover your heads. Sisters, cover your heads. We will face Jerusalem and open up. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy endure forever. For his mercy endure forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endure forever. And his mercy endure forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Psalms reading, our scripture reading is from Psalms 22, 21 through 24. Save me from the lion's mouth. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel. For he have not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither has he hid his face from us. But when he cried unto him, he heard. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the doing of his word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. Peace to everybody tuning in on the internet as well as on the phone line as we get into another Sabbath day lesson. And I'm going to read a little further. He read Psalm 22, and uh, I thought he was going to read farther down, which goes, kind of goes with the ending of this lesson. So I'm going to read a little bit more of Psalm 22 before we get into the lesson. This is really lines up with the lesson. He read the opening scripture was Psalm 22, verses 21 through 24. So I'm going to pick it up at 25. This is Psalm 22. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They that praise the Lord, they shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. So that's Psalm 22. I read 25 through 28. But it's, it's letting us know how this thing is going to end. The Lord created all, and ultimately he's going to rule over all. That's why I said... But, but for the time being, man been ruling. Man is ruling now. We had a big, you know, transition of power, peaceful transition of power today in this country, you know, showing the rulership of this country. And other countries have their presidents, prime minister, whatever they call them, that's in charge. But we know, brothers and sisters, this is only temporary. See, when you understand the truth of the matter, you won't believe the old time lie that we going to heaven. Uh-uh. It's about the Lord coming here and taking over the earth, taking over from the rulership 
that he let man have. That's what this whole thing is about. He, he let man rule, gave man a chance to do it, even gave different nations a chance to do it. Even gave all the sons of Adam their opportunities individually. Yes, and we in the last, uh, and, and, and gave all Noah's sons, he had three sons, he gave them time to rule. That's why back in the beginning of time, when we first started having nations, the great dynasties belonged to the children of Ham. They had the great dynasty, you know, like the Ethiopians. They come from Ham. These are black people. See, they rule first. See, when you understand how the Lord do things, you don't get carried away. You don't think, oh, the white man is this and white man. Look, God give everybody a chance to do their thing. That's all it is. So in the beginning, the sons of Ham had great dynasties. They ruled. Going back to, you read Genesis 11, where it talk about Nimrod, the Cushite. From Cush, Cush is who? Ethiopia. They, they really built the first dynasty. Nimrod did, the Ethiopian. The original name was Cush. Then you had the e Egyptians come from Ham. All these are black people. People don't seem to understand certain things now. But Egyptians, Pharaoh and all those guys, like we dealt with the uh, Israel, a black people curse, comparing them to the Egyptians, they was all black, but they had their time to rule. After Ham came and ruled, then Israel and other, not just Israel, other Semitic people, Shemites, had their opportunity. That's when the Arabs started having great dynasties. Even the so-called Judah Edomites had dynasty. The sons of Shem ruled second. Because if you read uh, Deuteronomy, the first is, First chapter when the Lord was getting ready to take Israel into the land, he spelled out that it wasn't just Israel. He was get, he had given land to. He had gave the Edomites land. He gave the Ammonites land. Oh, they, these to us come from Shem, Lot's children. The uh, Moabites land. He gave all of the sons of Shem land. And they had their time to rule. Now we in Noah's last son, Japhat, which is the Gentiles. That's what it tells you in Genesis 10. The Gentiles, they time is to rule. So it's not like when you see that the Gentiles, which we call white people, running, ruling the world all over. It's not like the way they just, you know, they just are so much smarter or so much. Wiser. It is their time to rule. God has felt like that. He gave everybody a chance to rule. That's why when people try to overthrow them and think they're going to do something, that ain't going to work because we know God has put it in the hand of the sons of Japhat now, which are the Gentiles we call Europeans or whatever. It is their time to rule. But notice when their time is up, the Lord is going to take over. That's why he told us to pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So this is what this is referring to right here. All the way back in Psalm 22. That's why he say, the Lord basically said, I got to remind y'all who the boss is. You all have forgotten because I let y'all, I let man run it for so long. You all have forgotten who the boss is. So read that. I'm going to have him read it now. Uh, Psalm 22. You ain't got it. Uh, uh, Psalm 22 and verse 27, because the Lord is going to let man know who the real boss is. See, man didn't forget that now. They think they're doing something on their own. Go ahead, 22 and 27, read it. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn into the Lord. Uh-huh. And all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. Notice it's not just Israel either. Some of these Hebrews mixed up thinking that only Israel going to worship and be saved in the end. He said all the, all the ends of the earth and all the kindreds of the nations. This is everybody. Now, understand that the Lord going to kill up countless people when he come back. That's what Armageddon is about. But we're going to get to it. Read 28. For the kingdom is the Lord. So what kingdom? We're talking a kingdom on earth. This is the gospel. Thy kingdom come. This is the good news. God going to take this thing over, and we're going to have nothing but peace and prosperity right here on this earth. See, it belonged to the Lord. He just let man do it for a little bit. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and what? And he is the governor 
among the nations. Right here on earth, the nations, brothers and sisters, the Lord is the ultimate boss. That's why things that's happening now, hey, it's already been dictated by the Lord. Just like I mentioned earlier, you know, we got a new president in this country, and people just get all shook up about every little thing. Everybody, you know, especially our people, we was ecstatic when Obama became president. Like that was gonna change something. I knew that wasn't gonna change nothing. Wasn't gonna make we still when whoever president, you still a slave. That's right. That's what you need to understand. Even Obama, he couldn't do nothing. And now they all, everybody up in arms, like, oh, Trump, what are he gonna do? It don't matter. It's all dictated by the Lord. And what people don't understand about even prophecy that we're going to deal with, it's not even based on America. That's what, see, if you understood the overall uh, prophecy that the Lord gave concerning the nations and their rulership, you wouldn't be so shook up over incidental stuff. That's all America. America is just a leaf on the tree of this thing. And I said that in a lesson recently, a brother he wrote me a note saying, how you going to say America is not, not really in prophecy? That's the greatest nation here, blah, blah, blah. That's just, you don't understand the Bible. Yeah, America been a great nation for, for what? A couple of hundred years? A couple of hundred years. America been a great nation, been the top nation. But look, what's a couple of hundred years to thousands of years? This thing go back. And so, but you don't, people don't understand the Bible. Even I look at some of the people got a little understanding come out of this guy, Herbert Armstrong. They mixed up. They don't understand that, hey, they know it's coming from Europe, but they focusing too much on Germany. And, uh, well, you know, see, they, you know, Rome don't have no army. It don't matter that Rome don't have no army. Hey, Rome and the Pope, hey, they the shrewdest people you ever want them to see. That's somebody that's going to use somebody else's army to fight for them. See, but it all go back to Rome. It's a saying, all roads lead to Rome, and that's exactly what it is. Rome is the real power that we need to be concerned with, but people don't know that. Right. You say, Rome, brother, brother, he sent me a note on that. Talking about Rome don't even have no army. Yeah, that's because you don't understand. If you understood the prophecy you will know they don't need no army. You don't need no army when you're going to have other people fight for you. You don't need one. I know the Pope got this little Swiss guard, and Italy do got some type of army, but they don't have a huge army. They army not big as Germany's army or France's army, nowhere near big as the United States and Russia's army, but it don't matter. Whoever control the armies is the boss, don't matter where they come from. That's right. So we're going to take a look at it, brothers and sisters, so people, we don't be so bent out of shape about something that's really not that significant. Things are falling in place. I understand, and we've been understanding for years, because me and this brother, hey, we had some good, good teachers, Brother Boo and Brother Daniel. We've been understanding for years that America is going to have to start slipping and sliding. And that's kind of what you can see the indications going on, even with this new president. You know, he said he want to make America great again. But some of the things he's saying, even, you know, like I listened to some people heard his speech today. They said, oh, it wasn't that bad. But the foreign policy part, that was a nightmare. Of course it is. Because we know on the world scene, Watch and see what happened. America going to start to slide back. And you're going to see Western Europe over in Rome. You're going to see them st step up. And that's really some of the language that the new president is already putting out there. He already saying, look, we just going to worry about America. He going to isolate America. You know, because America hand is in everything in the world. All over the place. But the way he talking... And got even some of America's so-called called allies worry. He talking like, look, we let y'all, y'all ain't paying enough money. We let y'all handle y'all business. But see, that ain't how America been operating. America been operating, hey, don't worry, we're going to take care of y'all. And America been running it. You know, we're going to, we're going to, we know y'all 
don't have no arm. Don't worry. We're going to hand it for you. Somebody messing with you, we're going to take care. But the way he acting, like he going to withdraw America from the world scene, and that's only going to make the power base in Europe, which centered around Rome, come back to life. And that's what it have to do. It have to come back to life because I understand, hey, we don't look like we see Rome doing nothing, but understand there's a such thing as the Roman Empire. Everybody's heard of the Roman Empire. That, that's, that, that's in ancient times. Going back to Jesus' time, that's when the Roman Empire was ruling. But the Roman Empire lost their might back in the day Really, officially, around 470-something, that's when the last Roman emperor got dethroned. But like I said, Rome is shrewd. Rome figured out the way to keep a measure of power just enough so they could revive totally eventually. And that's what's getting ready to happen now. They're going to totally revive. But they shrewd. See, I know America can't be the one. Everything America got set up and these other nations got set up, it's based on Rome anyway. Where do you think America get a Senate from? See, where that start from? That started from Rome. <coughs> Senate and all this stuff. So even the way they, even the way they govern was set up by Rome. And not to mention all of us. In America, all over the world, we've been influenced the wrong way spiritually by Rome. And that's how Rome been controlling when they lost their military might. They say, look, we can't control them physically, but let's control their mind. That's why we got all this bad religion. But we're going to look at it. We're going to get into it. But that's it. Rome got to step up and become the full-fledged power. And the Lord is telling you all this in the Bible but we have to read the scripture and get some understanding of it. The Lord done told you the whole story. That's how I know this God is the, is the God. Because he didn't told you this stuff before it go down, brother and sister. The healing of the beast, Rome. The healing of the beast, Rome. So the reason why that's the title is because Rome, like I mentioned, was ruling the greatest kingdom on the earth. After the Greek Empire, then came the Roman Empire, smashed everybody. And ruled for hundreds of years back in the day. But then didn't nobody really knock them off. You had some Germanic tribes came over there and, and deposed the emperors. But mostly they fell from within. And they were shrewd enough to keep enough power. And that come mainly in the end. It came through religion. They kept some power to be around to get healed in the end to be revived as a world empire all over again. But it got to be wrong because the Lord told you it from the beginning. And once Rome is done, there, will never, there won't be another world ruling empire. See, America is a great empire. They, not, they don't rule the whole world. In other words, America can't tell every single solitary person in this world, you do this the way we say do it. Because we know, hey, Russia going to have something to say. They try to tell them what to do. And other countries got some sovereignty. So, but see, the thing with, with the Roman Empire, the last, they are the, really the last world ruling empire. It didn't matter where you was at. If you was in their reach, Rome told you what to do. The, you didn't have no say so. You wasn't trying to set up your own little government. No. Rome was a world ruling empire, the last one, and they still here. So that's the title again, the healing of Rome, of the beast, Rome. See, the beast, the Bible talks about the beast, the beast, the beast. People don't understand the beast is just a kingdom. It's a kingdom. And it refers sometimes to the leader of the kingdom, but still we talking a kingdom. And Rome got wounded, but Rome is going to get healed. And, hey, I can see how our new president, hey, he going to help that along a little bit. Cozy with Russia, which is anti-West, and kind of already a alienating uh, the Western allies 
like Germany and, and, and France and all those, the, the European Union period. But we're going to get into it. We got a number of scripture to read. We're going to start off in Revelation 17 and verse 8. Revelation 17. And this is no, by, by no means is this really touching the tip of the iceberg of this lesson. We got much thorough lesson on this. But this is just a little, a little overview, I say, of, the, of this prophecy that's letting us know how this world is going in. Now, remember, all this we talking about, the healing of the beast, Rome, coming back to life, all this got to happen before Jesus come and take this thing over. Ultimately, we just read, he, he opened the scripture, Psalm 22, the Lord is the governor among the nations. He's going to have to remind the nations who run it. But the Lord cannot take over until Rome time is up. He can't take over. But again, you, when I'm telling people all this, some people don't understand. They say, well, what about America? America is just a leaf on the tree. They small when it come to this. And they, they even small, even if you just look at world history, they small. Only been here a couple of hundred years. And where they come from anyway? They come from Europe. It's the same old people. They come from Europe. They, descendants, they some of the people, descendants of the people who Rome was ruling over. Because Rome ran everything. Now, Revelation 17 and verse 8. Now, this one verse really tell you the whole story if you got ears to hear Revelation 17 and verse 8. Go ahead and read it. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit uh -huh. and go into perdition. Uh -huh. And they that dwell on the earth shall wander, uh -huh. whose name was, were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. Well, this is some dynamic stuff here if you really understand it. This is telling you the whole story. See, we not, we not dealing with no, with no recent kingdom like America in this prophecy. We dealing with some longevity. We dealing with a kingdom that's come from ancient times. That's why he described it like this. First of all, he called it the beast. That's the title of the lesson. See, again, we think this is just in here for good reason. We think this is like some cartoons, some dragons and beasts and animals. No, this is some straight-up prophecy to tell you how this thing going to end. So he said the beast, because he showed John, and we're going to look at it more in depth, the beast that thou sawest. Now, I understand when he say beast, we really, we just talking kingdom, brothers and sisters. And we prove that. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. So that's letting you know, brothers and sisters, we looking for a kingdom, a dynasty that was once upon a time back in the day. And then is not, he letting you know, look, it fell off. But it's still here because he's still talking about it, right? But it fell off. It lost the might that it had. That's all he said. That's why he said was and is not. Obviously, it's not gone because he said it shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. What do that mean? That means it's coming back to life, brothers and sisters. And the bottomless pit just means obscurity. It's been hidden. That's why if you don't have spiritual eyes, understand of this word, you don't, you don't understand that this is wrong. That Rome is going to be put a hurting on the world like you have never seen in a short time. And you worried about Donald Trump. Uh-uh. Now, this thing is coming from across the waters that's going to take off. But he said, the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottom of the pit and go into perdition. Perdition means destruction. It's going to start to destroy like you haven't seen. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. So those that don't know no better, they're going to follow this kingdom, which is reared at this time, reared in false religion. That's how I survived. 
hey, you know, the, the, the people, according to even this putting this political system back together in Rome, they can't help but get a religious side. They do because the religious man, and I'm talking about the Pope, hey, he kept Rome. He kept Rome from going out. He kept Rome from being destroyed totally. Even when they first started knocking off the emperors, who was there to step in? Hey, the Pope, which is called, you know, called he's called what? The Bishop of Rome. And even most people don't pay attention. They think it's just the Catholic Church. Oh, the Catholic Church. No. Give it the full name, the Roman Catholic Church. That's the official name on the books because that's where it derived from. So it's all, all roads lead to Rome. So he said again, it's going to go into perdition. Those that don't know no better, they're going to wonder, because their name's not in the book of life from the foundation of the world, but they're going to wonder when they what? Read that last part. When what? End um, of verse 8. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose name were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world uh -huh. when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. See, you understand what you're reading? He said, when they behold the beast, or i.e. kingdom, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. That's some amazing stuff right there. It was, it is not, it lost. That's why you don't see it. That's why when I e even mention stuff like this, brothers with no understanding, they say, oh, what you talking about? Rome, Rome, Rome. I had a brother tell me the other day, Rome don't even have no army. That's because you don't see it. That's because it is not temporarily. But it's just temporary. It got to come back. So they're going to wonder when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. That's how we understand it come from way back in ancient times. Let's go further. We're going to keep coming back to Revelation and Daniel. Now we're going to Daniel 7 because we're going to show you, brother and sister, this beast was back in the day. We're going to show you where it started at, and then we're going to show you where it ended at. And so you don't be worried about some incidental stuff happening in America. Daniel 7. Daniel 7, pick it up at verse 3. Because see, Daniel saw a number of beasts. But understand, we're only concerned with one of them. Daniel 7 and 3, read it. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Okay, four great beasts. See, Daniel saw four. We're only concerned with one, brother and sister. And that's Rome. And that's the fourth one. It's the last one. See, when you just understand this, you know it's all about that kingdom coming after these four beasts finish. And the, the, the fourth one is the last one. That's how I know it can't, it can't switch to America or, somebody, or Russia or anybody. No. Once we found out who the fourth beast was, that's the one. It don't matter how many changes it go through, how many downfalls it have, that's the one. All you got to do is wait on it to get its power back. So he said these great and four great beasts, he saw them. We're not, we not dealing with the particulars today, but he said four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from another. Let's make sure we understand when we say beast, because that's the title, the healing of the beast. Rome. Which one is Rome right here? The fourth one. It's the fourth beast. Let's read it. Skip over to verse 17 so we know what we're dealing with right off the bat. See, the Bible explains itself. I'm just talking, 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 but I could just read it, but most people wouldn't necessarily get it because they've been reading this stuff a long time, haven't gotten it. Go ahead, 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Oh, now we know what the beast is referring to. It's referring to kings or kingdoms. See, he, he said kings here because really, technically, it's just one conglomerate kingdom, way the Lord look at it. And he, he let four different nations rule it, but they rule in the same thing. That's why he say that. But technically, he's talking, he talking about kingdoms. 
But where they coming from? We talking on the earth. But pay attention how long this lasts and what happens at the end of these four beasts reign. When they reign is over, what's going to happen? These great beasts, which are four, are four kings or kingdoms. I'm explaining that. We're going to see it a little later. Which shall rise out of the earth. We talking earth, though. Get it out your mind that you're going to heaven. You ain't going nowhere. Go ahead, 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. See, they're going to take the kingdom. It's one kingdom been ruled over since this time, been ruled over by four different people or nations. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Have that happened yet? No. Nope. So that lets you know the fourth one is the one that the saints going to take the kingdom from. Because they came in succession, one after another. When you got to the fourth one, even though the fourth one was around 2,000 years ago, don't think he gone nowhere. Because he, cause when he gone permanently, the saints going to be running this thing. That's right. The saints going to be running it. So he ain't gone nowhere, but we already know that because we're looking for the beast that was and is not and yet is. He haven't went nowhere. He's been just chilling, laying dormant for some time. But they got everything in place to be healed. Everything is there. So he said, these great beasts, which are four or four kings, which are going to rise out of earth, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. How long the saints going to have the kingdom? Go ahead. And possess the kingdom forever. Even forever and ever. Wait a minute. When the saints are the saints ruling the kingdom on earth now? No. Not at all. Men running it and men that don't care about God is running it. When the saints rule it, they're gonna rule it forever. It's gonna be what we call paradise here. When the saints get a hold of it, but they can't get a hold of it till the Lord knock off the fourth beast or kingdom. And being at the fourth beast of kingdom, not looking too good now, that got to be totally healed in order for the Lord to knock them off. But we know he's coming back. So he said, the saints of the most high shall take the king. If you understand this, there's no way you'd be thinking about going to heaven. The saints looking to rule on earth. I am. That's what my Bible telling me. They're going to take the kingdom, but we talking kingdom, brothers and sisters. These not no animals, even though he described, he used animals as an analogy. We ain't literally talking about a bear and lion and leopard. We talking about kingdoms. That's what we talking about. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall rise out of earth, but the saints of the Most High shall take the king and possess the king forever, even forever and ever. That's where it's going to go down in the end. So being that the last one will be in charge. He focused more on him. So skip to verse 19 and go ahead, bro. Then I would know. Oh, I'm sorry. I did go to go back to 7 to read into it from, with it from the start. Go to verse 7. Go ahead. After this, I saw in the night vision. Now, after this is after the first three beasts. We focus it on the fourth one because that's the one that was and is not and yet is. That's the one going to be around for Jesus to come and knock them off. And that's what's going to happen. How do you think Jesus is taking you to heaven when Jesus must come and put this beast down? He got to put this beast down. So that's why we, we focus on the last one because that's the one going to be around. After this, I saw a night vision and behold what? And behold, a fourth beast. Uh, for this is the last one. He named all three of them. And we go through all of them in detail at another time, but we know the first one was Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was the first king. And then after Babylon ruled for some time, the Medes and the Persians took over, which is Russia and Iran. They took over way back in the day in the, in the, in the 400 B.C. Babylon started in the, around the 600 B.C. After Medes and the Persians, the third one was the Greek Empire. They ruled from around the 
the 300 BCs to up until around the time of Jesus, a little bit, little, sometime before Jesus. And the fourth one that took over that was ruling when Jesus was here was the Roman Empire. The empress called the shots everywhere. See, wasn't even no religious man to interfere with the empress. He was, the, he was making himself God. That was then. That's the beast that was and is not and yet is, the Roman Empire. So he said, after night vision, behold, a fourth beast. What's the name of this fourth beast? What is it? Dreadful and terrible. Oh, this beast is dynamic. He called it dreadful and terrible. What's so special about this beast is he didn't even use the animal. Just, that's the name. That's the animal he used, just dreadful and terrible. See, the other three had, he used the top animals that he could use in, in the animal kingdom to show somebody that's running it with power, tearing something up. So the first one, Babylon, was a lion. The second one, Medo-Persian, was a bear. The third one, Greek Empire, was the leopard. Alexander the Great was the first king. And then it had four heads representing his four generals who took over. A leopard with four heads. These are some destroying animals. A lion, a bear, and a leopard, a four-headed leopard and four wings it had on it, too. Okay, when he got to the fourth one, he didn't even use the animal in his kingdom because this beast is so crafty and shrewd and such a killer. And the reason why it's such a killer, again, I'm going to say it one more time, because when they couldn't kill your body by force no more, couldn't make you do what they did, they got slick. They say, hey, if you control their mind. That's why all this false religion coming in. That's why they didn't force it down your throat. And you think you worshiping God and you worshiping the devil. You worshiping the beast. They didn't control us through religion. So he said, this one, the fourth beast, it's dreadful and terrible. What else? And strong exceedingly. Exceedingly. Go ahead. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. See, it's, it's, it's destroying everything in sight. And then when it get done, it stamped what's left. Go ahead. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. Oh, it was different. It was more dynamic than all the beasts that were before it. Because all the beasts that were before it, remember beasts' kingdom, that's all. They came and went. They came and went. One after another. They came and went. This boy ain't going nowhere. He figured out a way to still hold on to some power. And for, for the people that's going to tell me, well, where how, you know, Rome don't even have no army. The Pope don't have no army. How in the world he got all this power within? He got it some kind of way. Why I'm born into this world and the top religious man on the planet, everybody bound down to is the man from Rome. Why? Because he got some power. Tell me, he ain't got no army. He got some power somehow, haven't he? But he been using others' army. He have others do his bidding. It don't matter. You want to talk about some shrewd political maneuvering. Hey, they started it. They started it all. So he said it was diverse from all the beasts or kingdoms that were before it, and it had ten horns. See, the ten horns at this time, they just represent ten leaders that, that kept kept it from dying out. And the last one is going to put the pieces back together. But we ain't going to get into all the details of that. But these are these are, are ten emperor type men. But it got something else. And this is what we've been referring to. Verse 8. Go ahead. Okay. And it had ten horns. And it had ten horns. Ten horns. It, generally in the Bible when we talk about these beasts and we're talking about a kingdom. When we talk about the horns, we're talking about kings in, uh, over the kingdom. Kings and over the beast. So it got ten horns. These are ten emperors that came. See, once Rome fell, it kept having attempts at being revived over the years. That's how. See, 
Before Rome fell, the Pope was nobody. But after it fell, hey, the Pope went to work and he worked with these, he been working with these horns right here and getting more power. They give him power. How you think he got Vatican City, a state within a state? How you get that? Because he got enough power and he made deals. And they gave him. But anybody just giving you nothing for the sake of giving it to you, they gave it to him because he showed some strength. And they gave that to him. But who did? Who said it? Hey, one of these horns. These horns who he'd been dealing with. See, he's a special type of horn, though. He's a special type of leader or king. Go ahead, read verse 8 again. I considered the horn, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. Another little horn. This is him. This is the one right here. So you got, you got regular temporal type leaders, emperor type men, horns, kings. But then you got a little one. This is a little special one. He got a little uniqueness to him. He said, I checked out the horn, and then I look, all of a sudden I see a little, I see a little horn. This, this, is, this, this, this dude here is something else. A little horn. Yeah, don't look like he got no army. And matter of fact, he killing you with kindness. But go ahead. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the root. Hey, he wiped out some of the ones that first started trying to run the, the, the failed Roman Empire when it first collapsed in the 400 ADs, 4th and 5th century. Go ahead. And behold. In his horn were eyes like the eyes of, a ma of man, and a mouth speaking great things. See, pay attention to that. This is the one who mouth speaking great things, but he looked normal. He, he looked more civil than the average horn or king. He looked more civil. He looked righteous because he coming in the name of God, but he's still a king. If you don't understand that the Pope of Rome is a king, Hey, you missing the whole boat. What happened? What do all these other kings do when one of them die? They go pay homage, don't they? Because that's the way it is. So this one, he, he looked more normal. Eyes like guys are a man and mouth speaking great things. Let's move on to verse 19 now because we're going to cut to the chase. The key to all of it. To understanding this is this fourth beast here in Daniel 7, it got to last until Jesus come. It got to last to the end because that's who Jesus is taking down. So when we get the revelation, we're not looking at no brand new beast. We're looking at this beast coming back because it's been laying dormant. It's simple as that. Verse 19. Go ahead. Then I would know the truth. Of the fourth beast. See, he's talking more about the fourth beast than them all, which makes sense since it's the one going to endure till Jesus come. And then Jesus is going to put them down and rule forever. The saints going to get the The saints got to get the kingdom from the fourth beast. So where you get America from? Oh, America just a piece of it. Some of the people a part of the fourth kingdom came and started America. That's why they don't get too far out of line with what was set up. That's why the Pope gave you Christmas and Easter. What do America acknowledge? They acknowledge it. <laughs> but go ahead. Which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, breaking pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. See, this beast is something else. See, he don't talk extensively like this about none of the three kingdoms prior. Only this one he give all of this time to and concern to because this is the one here. This is the beast that was and is not and yet is. Go ahead. And of the ten horns that were in his head. We read that. Go ahead. And of the other which came up. That other one came up. That's the religious leader. Go ahead. And before whom three fell, mm -hmm. even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, uh -huh. whose look was more stout 
than his fellows. He looked more stout than his fellows. He got a little more prestige and honor than his fellows because he said he coming in the name of Christ. But we know better. Go ahead. He 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 nothing about he he not about nothing but power. That's what it, that's what that's about. Go ahead. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. Oh, wait a minute. Down to the end, this horn or king is making war to the saints. With the saints, down to the end. Especially saints nowadays like us. Hey, that's coming back, reading the Bible, pulling the cover off all of this secrecy that's been hid that's in the Bible, you know they're going to want to make war with us after a short while. So it's some more war to come because it's going to go down until Jesus take the kingdom and give it to the saints. But until the saints take over, the saints on the bottom suffering, right? That's, right. that's what he said right here. That's why people believe in a rapture. You're going to be in for a rude awakening waiting on a rapture. Saints will die. Read my lips on that. Saints will die. Now, it's a place to flee to, and that's what we're going to be trying to get to. But even that, some saints going to die. He said, I beheld in the same horn, or king, made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Saints is losing, brothers. That's why, hey, this world is out of control now. Go ahead. Until the ancient of days came. Until the Lord come back. The ancient of days. That's the Lord himself. Saints going to be losing until the ancient of days come and knock off this fourth empire. This fourth beast. Go ahead. And judgment was given to the saints of the most high. And what else? And the time came that the saints possess the kingdom. Understand what you read. The saints going to be getting made war against until the ancient of days came and judgment is given to the saints of the most high and the time came that the saints possessed the king. Are the saints possessing the kingdom now? No. And it's so sad that the people that call themselves saints, they've been blinded by this fourth beast. They don't even think they should ever possess the kingdom because the fourth beast got you thinking you're going to heaven. Well, that fourth beast is something else. You waiting for the Lord to come and knock the fourth beast off so you can rule on the earth and the fourth beast got you thinking, no, we're going to heaven, brother. We waiting to go to heaven. And you worried about Donald Trump in the meantime. This is way out of his league. Go ahead. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. We talking kingdom. It's the last one. There would not be another world ruling empire after this one. So even though it fell asleep basically and got hurt bad back in the day, we still waiting on him to come back. That's why we know. We've been knowing, I've been knowing for 30 years that America going eventually slide back. They got to slide back. And Donald Trump looks like he's going to help it. <laughs> Not for the reasons that, that people think, but so mainly a lot of his foreign policy. Like he's talking about NATO, talking about NATO. NATO uh, is, is what did he say, insignificant. He said something else, obsolete, something like that. Yeah. NATO, obsolete. All them nations that's been going along with America, they're like, what are, you, what are you talking about? But we've been knowing NATO got to become obsolete. He ain't lying. It got to become obsolete. Because NATO is the tool that America used to control the world, this conglomerate of nations. They have alliances. But we know the European Union is going to have to step over, which is the people that's in the European Union, they signed the Treaties of Rome back in 1940-something. In right. The Treaties of Rome. That's what they signed to start the European Union. This is a conglomerate of nations in Europe that's coming together acting as one. They started off since 2000. They've been having the same currency, which is a miracle. They came up with the euro. All of them dropped their national currency, and they all operating off one currency because they're uniting. So it's just a matter of time before all the armies come together. And that will be the army of Rome, a United States of Europe army. And we know mainly it's going to be 10, 10 nations. 
That's the only way. See, Rome in itself, I understand why people don't get it, because Rome in itself, Italy or whatever, they couldn't do nothing by themselves. But they able to pull together a, a confederacy of nations that's going to operate as one, and that's all Rome was anyway. Rome was a conglomerate of people, and they put it all in one package. But it started and situated from Italy. So he said, that's what we waiting on. The ancient days are coming, the time that the saints possessed the kingdom. And verse 23 said, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Go ahead. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. So we know already. When we say beast, we know what we're talking about, brothers and sisters. We're talking about kingdom. Lord is just descripting this down for you. Go ahead. And she'll devour the whole earth and she'll tread it down uh -huh. and break it in pieces. Oh, it's done it. Keep going. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings. See, these ten kings that kept it, been keeping it alive. See, every time it looked like it fell in 476 and then, see, they couldn't just sit around and do nothing. So every now and then you get an emperor type man over there like Napoleon was one of them. You get all these different emperor type men to come along with some strength and their goal is to put this thing back in order and rule over everybody, rule over everybody. They ain't been able to do it. But the last one, the tenth one, is going to do it, but he's not going to be able to do it by himself. He got to deal with the religious man. See, understand one thing. Before Rome fell, the emperor was everything. He didn't have no alliances. He didn't need no help. The emperor called the shots for the whole world. The emperor called the shots. Okay, but once Rome fell, there, a new dynamic came in there. All of a sudden, you got this little horn, which is the religious leader, and he started bartering with these emperor-type men. He started bartering. Again, all you got to do is think about it. How did he get Vatican City? Because Benito Mussolini signed it over to him. Signed on the line. This is you. And he did that. See, they didn't necessarily get along. These people don't get along. But, hey, you don't get along when you're fighting for power. But they had to recognize the power that he had. So Benito Mussolini signed them Vatican City because he wanted to take these other lands that he had. He said, look, you give me all these papal states you got because you, you're all over the place with this stuff. You give me the papal states. You take Vatican City and stay over there. And that's what happened. That's how he got Vatican City. But, again, you got a two-headed system since Rome fell. Back in the day, it was one head, the emperor. Now you got a little horn, the religious leader, and you got a regular horn, a temporal leader. And that's how this is going to be revived in the end. Go ahead. What, what verse you at? 24. Read 24 again. And the ten horns out of this, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. That's the little horn. Go and ahead. He shall be diverse from the first, mm -hmm. and he shall subdue three kings. Uh -huh. Pay attention to this other horn, this little horn of this religious king. What are he doing? Always remember this about him. 25. And he shall speak great words against the most high. He speak great words against him. You say, well, how can a religious man speak great words against the most high? Because if he said what he say is law and he not saying what the most high saying, he's saying the most high don't know what he's talking about. If he telling you everything opposite from the most high, but say he's speaking for the most high, hey, he's speaking against the most high. He tell you what I say is law. Matter of fact, they got a thing. People don't understand. They got a thing that uh, the Pope is infallible when he speak on matters of doctrine. That means he cannot lie. Mm -hmm. Look it up. He's infallible. He can't lie. But then if he tell you you, you dying and saints going to heaven, that's a lie. That's right. And God and already said he's going to take over the kingdom on this earth. They ain't nobody telling us this, but you see, because you've been listening to the fourth beast, been listening to Rome. 
So he said he going to speak great words against the Most High. What else? And you wear out the saints of the Most High. And wear out the saints of the Most High. See, no wonder Satan keeping this hid from us and we don't understand none of this. Because he don't want you to understand what's really going on in this world. He going to wear out the saints. And you worried about getting wore out by Donald Trump. <laughs> this the one you got to worry about. That's one of the people looking in the wrong place. Quiet as a kept, Donald Trump might help a little bit before this thing hit the fan. <laughs> he said he going to wear out the saints of the most high. And what? And think to change times and laws. See, he already twisted things up. You're going to church on Sunday instead of the seventh day. You don't even know when the day starts. You think it started in the middle of the night. Uh-uh, day is over at, at sundown. Evening and the morning. We don't understand none of it because he's not already changed, but he's going to enforce the change at the end. The last three and a half years. That's great tribulation. See, this is leading us down to great tribulation. That will be the last vestige of the Roman Empire. That'll be their last time to rule. And they're going to rule. They're going to go out with a bang. They're going to rule with vengeance. Go ahead. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Now that's three and a half years. I think it said it earlier, the same thing. A time is one plus two times is three. One plus two is three. And then a dividing of time, that's a half of the year. Three and a half years. That's going to be the end of this thing. See, this chapter taking us down to the end of the world. We already know it because we're waiting on the saints to take the kingdom. He's going to reiterate it one more time. Go ahead. But the judgment shall sit. Once the judgment sit, the and Lord going to judge this world and take it over. Go ahead. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it. Because it got to be consumed and destroyed. Go ahead. And to the end. Uh-huh. 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Have we seen that happen yet, brothers and sisters? No, no we waiting on that kingdom come. Jesus said, pray for it. We waiting on it. It's coming here. But in order for God's kingdom to come here, all this, what we see right now, got to be changed. That means the Lord got to be the ultimate ruler on this earth. Right now, everybody calling their own shots. And Rome going to put that to rest because they're going to come back and, 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 and attempt to tell everybody what to do. But the kingdom and dominion of the kingdom, dominion and the greatness of the kingdom, under the whole heaven, not up in heaven, under the whole heaven, which is the earth, shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. But when are the saints going to take it? When the Lord knock off this fourth beast. But we don't even see the fourth beast now, unless you got spiritual eyes. So how is he going to knock it off? Because the fourth beast is being healed before our eyes, and we don't even know it. It's still around. That's why the you understand now why the Bible said the beast that was and is not and yet is. It's coming back to life. It's being healed. See, it never died. It just got hurt. Let's go to uh, Revelation 13. I ain't looking good on time. Goodness. I can't believe. See, these, these lessons, they get too good to me, too. <laughs> Revelation 13. Revelation 13 and 1. Go ahead. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea. We got another beast here. But see what people try to come up with something. They try to attribute this to America and this, that. Look, we got all the beasts we need in Daniel 7. Those four beasts take us to the end of time, to the Lord giving the kingdom, taking it from them, the, the, the four, and giving it to the saints. So we don't need no more beasts. But what we do need to see is how the fourth one made it from 2,000 years ago and still around in our days and going to be around when Jesus comes. That's what we need to see. So this is what he is showing you 
the healing of it is coming back. And that's why I say, hey, Donald Trump's going to have a hand in it because if he do what he say he's going to do, he's going to make NATO obsolete and isolate America from the rest of the world and just focus on domestic stuff, then, hey, Europe will be forced, Rome will be forced to step up and take care of their own business instead of following behind America. That's what's, that's what's on the agenda. And it's going to happen one way or another. But the way he talking, hey, it's going to happen sooner than later. See, and they already, it's already in the works. They're already trying to do it. But, you know, hey, America want to stay the top dog. They want to stay the top nation. But, hey, it's always been top nations get dethroned. That happens. Be, you know, Amer again, America's only, what, a couple of hundred years old? So, obviously, before America came on the scene, there was some top nations before, right? Even in recent history. Who was a top nation? Matter of fact, where did the people from America come from? Main people. They came all over Europe now. But the main people that started was from where? Britain, England, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and at that time, hey, Britain was a top nation. Matter of fact, the pound, the Britain pound, was the world currency. But now, that changed all of a sudden. America started, hey, they, they finally, because, uh, you know, Britain was ruling this over here from, uh, from Britain. But, hey, they got rid of that, that yoke and had the war, Revolutionary War, and now, hey, they their own nation. But this is just recent history. We talking about something. We talking this. The Lord telling you in the Bible about something that has some longevity. That's why if you look Rome up, it's some statements about Rome that call Rome the eternal city because it's been around and been calling some shots for so long. So now he said, I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast. We know what the, a beast is. We talking the kingdom. Rise up out of the sea, having what? Seven heads and ten horns. Now this one, see, this is a new look at the fourth beast in Daniel. It only got seven, it got seven heads and ten horns because it's a regrouping, a regathering. It's a healing of that fourth beast that was and is not and yet is. It's a healing of it. But it got seven heads and it got ten horns just like the one in, the, in Daniel 7 had 10 horns, right? Even though I know the horns are different because three of those horns got plucked up. See, these 10 horns here, this is, this is just a modern look at it. This is, a re, this is a look at the beast in its healed form. It's not looking at it 2,000 years ago. Daniel 7 started off two when, when it was running 2,000 years ago. So it got seven heads. And the seven heads, it, it has meaning. Just like even Rome is built on seven hills. And the whole Gentile dynasty, all four of those beasts in Daniel had seven heads when you had them up. But that's, that's something else. But it got ten horns. And upon his heads, what? His horns, ten crowns. And ten crowns. That means these are ten, these are ten kings. Horns mean kings, but they're a little different from Daniel 7. But it's similarities that it, it, both of them got ten. Because we're talking about the same beast, just a healed version. Verse 2. And upon his heads, okay. the names of blasphemy. And upon his heads, the names of blasphemy. So this kingdom is not an ordinary kingdom. Again, this kingdom, this revived or this healed version is reared in religion. That's how it survived. Hey, when Rome couldn't do nothing else, the Pope said, I'll help out. Pope step up and kept Rome moving. Go ahead. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. The beast or kingdom was like to a leopard. So it got all the characteristics. We didn't read the four in Daniel. We just know it was four. We didn't read them individually. This one got all the characteristics. It got ten horns like the fourth beast, which is what it is. It's the fourth beast. We reading about the fourth beast, the beast that was in Daniel, started off and was not and yet is. 
And it got a leopard, that was the Greek empire, so it got all these great characteristics coming together, putting it all together. Go ahead. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. That's in Daniel 7, that's the Medo-Persians. Go ahead. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. It got all the great characteristics. That was the Babylonian empire, starting with Nebuchadnezzar. Go ahead. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and Great authority. See, Satan is, is behind this system. Go ahead. And I saw one of his heads. Hey, pay attention now. He saw one of his heads as what? As it were wounded to death. See, Rome had a deadly wound inflicted on him. This is where the title come from. Had a deadly wound. When did the wound get inflicted? Approximately 475, 76 AD. Around that time. When the last emperor got knocked off the throne. So... But again, it didn't go nowhere. That's why it's the beast that was and is not and yet is. It hung out behind the scenes. So he said, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Go ahead. And his deadly wound was healed. See, we're looking at it. It's, 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 it's in the process of being healed now. And when it's healed, it's go going to be a force to be reckoned with like none other. And his deadly wound was healed. That's the title, the healing of the beast. Notice it's the healing. We're not looking for a new kingdom like America that's 200 years old. We're looking for an old kingdom that's been laying low that's coming back. And I saw one of his heads, it was wounded to death, and the deadly wound was healed. Go ahead. And all the world wondered after and the beast. And all the world going to be following this system that is not godly. But they going to make it look like they bringing peace to the world. The America couldn't do it, but see, we able to step up now. Go ahead. And they worship the dragon. Uh, ultimately, if you worshiping some contrary to God, you worshiping Satan. He's the dragon. because he And he's the one going to make this happen. The Lord going to let him get power to this revived empire. And they worshiped the dragon, which did what? Which gave power unto the beast. So the dragon, Satan, is giving power unto this kingdom. Go ahead. And they worshiped the beast. And they worshiped the beast. Go ahead. Saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is like unto the beast? Go ahead. Who is able to make war with him? Who, is, who, who can fight this? See, this is not America. We haven't got to this point yet. This is a kingdom that's going to come with so much force. Everybody going to marvel. Who oh, is like this? This is a new dynasty, but really it's an old dynasty. Go ahead. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things. Didn't we read that in Daniel 7? See, nothing changed, brother and sister. This is the leader. Even though it's two leaders, you got the little horn and you're going to have a regular horn in the end. It's going to be two men working together. Hey, the ultimate boss, yeah, he tell you that with no if and buts about it, is the religious leader. He's the little horn. Matter of fact, in the uh, papacy doctrine, uh, the Pope say all you regular normal kings and leaders and present prime minister, ministers, y'all do not know how to reign unless you listen to me. You can't reign really right unless you listen to me because he want to be Jesus, he want to be king of kings and lord of lords. That's what he said. He said, I replaced him. That's a whole other thing. But it's what we read in Daniel 7 concerning the one that came out of the fourth beast. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and what? Blasphemies. Blasphemies. Go ahead. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. See, when it hit the fan, it's going to be three and a half years. 40 and 2 months. Didn't we read in Daniel 7 a times? Times plural, 1 plus 2 is 3. And a dividing of times, three and a half years, 42 months. Same thing. This is it. See, we ain't got to look for a new kingdom. We look for the old one that's coming back. Go ahead. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God. Oh, it's going to go down. Go ahead. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle in them that dwell in heaven. Keep reading. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Didn't we read that? 
He said he made war with the saints and wore out the saints of the Most High. He made war with the saints and overcoming the saints and people waiting on the rapture. That's a lie from, from the devil. Got you comfortable, and this is on the scene. Now you distracted, worried about an American president when this thing coming from Rome. He said, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And to what? And to overcome them. Go ahead. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. See, he's going to be ruling it everywhere for real. Absolute. Tell you what you do. Tell you what to do. You don't do it. I'm going to kill you. That's how, they, that's how the Roman Empire was. And that's how it's going to be when they come back to life. When it's a Totally healed. It's being healed already. They got the economics. They put an economic. It looked like even people say, well, I heard Trump say, uh, European Union ain't going to make it, you know, because England got out. We knew England was going to get out of it anyway. They weren't going to be a part of Brexit. That means Britain exit the union. Hey, we knew that was coming because they ain't never really wanted to go along. They too tied to America. They ain't never really wanted to go along with it. They ain't. They're not willing to give up their sovereignty to this union. And that's what the main nations in this union are going to do. They're going to give up their sovereignty. That's how it's going to be a, a dynasty. They're going to be like, whatever you want us to do, all us nations together, we with you. Britain wasn't ready for that. So he said, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds tongue and nation but we know that got the end when the Lord come right yes, sir. let's go to Revelation 6 this one is going to hit the fan and he going to be ruling it everywhere see this is the meaning of a beast or empire they want to be able to tell you what to do and if you don't do it we will kill you that's the way they did it in the old days. They wasn't taking all you, you protesting and all that kind of stuff. Look, we're going to tell you what to do. If you don't do it, we're going to kill you. See, they want to bring back. See, somebody want to make something great again, but hey, it's Rome. They want to make Rome great again. Revelation 6 and 8, go ahead. And I looked and beheld, and behold, a pale horse. See, this is, this is when it's in full flesh, when they get the power, when it's totally healed, and they're going to be able to call it how they want to call it. But we're still talking about this revived Roman Empire. And I looked and behold a pale horse. So this man is riding his horse, ruling. Go ahead. And his name that sat upon him was death. Death. Go ahead. And hell followed with him. Now, it's not a literal person on a, on a horse. This is a leader enforcing his rule. And if you follow this leader, you're going to hell. So that's why great tribulation is something to behold because you're going to have the opportunity to follow this leader to keep your life and, and live okay, but then you're going to go to hell or deny this leader, and he's going to say, well, I'm going to kill you. You got to be like the three boys in Daniel, the fourth chapter. They never can said, bow down, or we're going to put you in the fire. They're like, put, put us in the fire. Right mm -hmm. now, just put us in the fire. No, I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to play the music. Nope, no, ain't no need to play the music. We telling you now we ain't bowing down. That's the type of faith some people are going to need when this happens. Same type of faith. It said, the, the one on the pale horse's name that sent him was death and hell followed with him. Finish verse 8. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth. Over the fourth. See, he got complete control over the fourth part because he ain't going to get it all because he would run away with the world if he got it all. See, the Lord going to use. See, we knew we know Russia wasn't going to go nowhere. People thought, oh, the Soviet Union broke up. They not no good. No, the, the Lord going to use them to keep things from just going totally out of hand where he have a balance. So they can't just do everything they want to do everywhere. That's what's going to make them mad because Russia's not going. They not ever going to go. Even though you got some people in Russia who follow the man, but Russia itself, they not going. That's why he don't have total reign. Even though he got people everywhere listening to him, 
but he, he only had complete power over a fourth part of earth, which is a whole lot. And in that fourth part, he going to do what he want to do. No opposers. Go ahead. To kill with sword. To kill with the sword. He choose to kill you with the sword. He'll do it. Go ahead. And with hunger. You mean he'll starve you out. That's where the mark of the beast come in at. See, this is where the world is headed. But this is the end rulership of the fourth beast, the Roman Empire. But in order to get here, we got to see the fulfillment of the healing that's coming already, but it got to come it got to come all the way. Go ahead. And with death and with the beast of the earth. Kill you any kind of way. Go ahead. And when he had opened the fifth seal, mm -hmm. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Uh-huh. And for the testimony which they held. Uh, now you saw, you, whoever heard of some souls dying for the word of God, you could see an indication of that now, just like with what we read. Now, the Bible is here for us to read. And what it means and how it's being explained right out the Bible, you could see some people would want to kill somebody teaching the truth like this. So, hey, it got to come to pass. See, right now it's freedom of religion everywhere. You can kind of say how you want to say it, but, hey, that's going to be out the window when this beast come back to power. Uh-uh. He going to kill you any way he want to. And mainly he hate the saints because the saints pulling the cover off for him anyway. He said when he opened the fifth, so much for the saints going to heaven, no rapture, because he said, verse 9, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw in the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Why we don't know this, brothers and sisters? And for the testimony which they hear. And the testimony is according to the word of God. It ain't like they do on Sunday instead of, I got a testimony. See what happened the other day I was driving down the street. No, the testimony is they believe in what thus said the Lord in the scripture. They believe in the word. And they won't let it go. And when the man say bow down, they say, no, we're not bowing down. And he going to kill them. This is some terrible stuff. Verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, mm -hmm. saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? See, that's going to be the feeling of those living at that time. And saints going to be dropping dead, even though a, a, a bulk of the saints going to flee and make it to safety, but still some saints going to be left to die, to be martyrs, to be witnesses on how to reject this lie. Go ahead. And white robes were given to every one of them. Uh -huh. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So now, even though dead people don't talk, this is an analogy, but the bottom line is saints are dying and by this time, toward the end in tribulation, some more saints got to die. But then we know when it's all said and done, what we read in the beginning, Psalm 22, ultimately the kingdom is the Lord's and he's going to take it over. He's going to come and knock the fourth one off. And that's why this lead right into it. Because when, when the fourth beast time is up, this is going to happen. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Now we're under the sixth seal. It's only one more after this. That's the climax. But go ahead. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as south cloth of hair, mm -hmm. and the moon became as black. Now, here, this is Jesus coming now. He putting the end to the fourth beast right here. This how this thing is. This is why you got to know the second coming of Jesus is a real coming, not a rapture to heaven. It's a coming, and it's a coming to put down the fourth world ruling empire that's, that's, that's going to be revived. He got to put it in. He got to put it down. Put this beast down. Go ahead. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as fig tree even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs mm -hmm. when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Go ahead. 
and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. The sky being rolled back because the Lord is coming now. But he coming to take over. Go ahead. And every mountain and island will move out of their place. Uh-huh. And the kings of the earth and the great men. Uh, all the kings of the earth because you still got plenty of kings, but you had Rome revived running rampant. But the kings of the earth, go ahead, and the and great the, men. And the rich men. Still got rich men, go ahead. And the chief captains. You still got some warriors, the chief captains. And the mighty men. Uh-huh. And every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And said into the mountains. They running high when that sky peeled back, because here comes Jesus now. King Jesus. He's not called king for nothing. Go ahead. And said into the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. See, now everybody shook up, but they've been doing dirt up until this time. We just ran killing the saints. See, now you should understand why Jesus got to come back and take this thing. Because, they, hey, we ain't got a chance in this world. Believe in what the Lord say, which is what we got to believe in, we don't have a chance. But the Lord going to come and take it over and give it to the saints. Go ahead. And from the wrath of the Lamb. Now they running and hiding and say, hide us from the one sitting on the throne. He's going to peel the sky back and give them an indication, give them a sign of him coming. And they're going to be running and hiding like it's a great, you know, like an alien invasion. It is an alien. It's the Lord. Hide us from him to sit on the throne. And from the wrath, notice it's a lamb with some wrath. See, the same one that let them kill him 2,000 years ago, he coming back and he won't get killed again. He going to do the killing. He's not a lamb no more. Technically, he's a lion. But it's the same one that was the lamb. So whoever heard of a lamb with some wrath, you just did, Jesus. Go ahead. For the great day of his wrath has come. Why, why preachers can't at least tell us that? Even if they don't understand and get all this that we're talking about in Revelation, at least let us know that Jesus is coming back with full-fledged wrath. That's what he's coming back. For the great day of his wrath. didn't say rapture, did he? No. <laughs> That's what people act like going to happen when Jesus comes. That means he ain't really coming. That's a lie from, from hell. For the great day of his wrath is coming, what? And who shall abide? Who shall be able to stand? Who shall be able to stand? Go to Luke uh, 21 now. Luke 21, because we did a lesson on Israel being black and cursed and scattered and, you know, in slavery, but we still God's people. If you, that's the first thing. If you don't understand who Israel and where they, the part they play in this, this don't add up anyway. Because Israel, we was in our kingdom in Israel and Jerusalem was the capital. When we messed up, God sent us into slavery and we got to be in slavery until this happened, until Jesus come back. See, that's what he's coming back, to take over this world, bring Israel back, and establish his heavenly kingdom on earth, headquartered in Jerusalem. You see, it all go together. So he's going to knock Rome off, and he's going to establish his kingdom back on this earth. But people don't understand it if you miss out who, really, who Israel really is. It all go together so you know what Jesus is doing. That's why he said he only sent to the lost sheep. He got to come save Israel. But to save Israel from all these nations where we in slavery at, he got to put down the beast. He got to put down this fourth beast. Luke 21 and 24. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Now, Jesus was prophesying of our final demise from the promised land which was, took place in 70 A.D. This was approximately 30 A.D. when he was talking, right before he got crucified. He said, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. That's what our forefathers who was still in the promised land did. Because the, the, the Gentiles, which was who, who was it at this time that did it? Who we talking about? The Romans. See, the Romans been ruling a long time, even though they don't look like they ruling they land dormant. They the beast that was and is not and yet is. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. The Romans did this. That was the final demise, our final demise from the promised land. And we was led away captive into all nations. And here we are. 
You got only one group of people that brought to this country, all the islands, all these places, as slaves. One group of people, black people. Led away captive into all nations. But that's, see, you got to put two and two together to understand this. But notice how long we're going to be in captive. All this going to come together when he come to knock off the beast. He bringing us home. Led away captive into all nations. And what about Jerusalem and our capital? Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles uh -huh. until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. See, and Jerusalem, we went into slavery. Now the Gentiles doing what they want to do, and they're going to do what they want to do until their time is up. That's what you got to get. The Gentiles going, we went into slavery, and they going to try down Jerusalem until their time is up. See, it's a set time. See, it's not like we say, well, the white man do this. White. Look, everything he do, the Lord allow him to do it because he gave him his time to rule. And he won't take it from him until his time is up. But they're going to get crazy and crazy trying to hold on to it, and the Lord going to have to come and deal with it. Until the times of the Gentiles. See, the Romans are Gentiles. The Gentiles have been ruling for over 2,000 years now. Going back to the first beast, Nebuchadnezzar. And Rome really put it on the map and, and making it last. But their time got to be fulfilled eventually, and that's when this happened. Verse 25. And there shall be signs in the... And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. See, he just jumped to the end. We went into slavery in 70 AD. Then he said, and Jerusalem going to be trying down of the Gentiles to the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And now I'm going to give you a glimpse when their time is up. He just took you all the way to the end and how it's going to look because this is the coming of Jesus, which we just read in Revelation 6. The sun and the moon get dark. See, when their time is up, the sky going to roll back. Because the Lord not going to have no army on the earth, really. He's going to use Russia for a minute. But he's going to come back and dethrone them himself. He's going to be on this earth. And they shall, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in what? In the stars and upon the earth. Distress of nations which perplexity the sea. And the waves roar. You name it. Bad stuff. It's going on now. It's trouble all over, but it's going to get worse and worse until that sky rolled back. Lord going to shake up the world then. Go ahead. Men's heart failing them for fear. Well, we just saw when the sky rolled back, they're going to be running and hiding. Hide us from the sitting on the throne and the wrath of the Lamb. Men's heart failing them for fear. Go ahead. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Uh-huh. For the powers of of the heaven shall be shaken. The powers of the heaven, he going to rip the sky up. Go ahead. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Can we get a rapture out of this, brother and sister? See, when you understand the game plan, you don't get detoured on some failed lie. You understand the game plan. He coming to knock off the fourth beast. They going to see him coming. Why are you coming in the clouds with power and great glory to take a few people to heaven in a rapture? Mm. That don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. No, he coming to take over. The kingdom is the Lord's. And he is the governor among the nations. Go ahead. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift your heads for your redemption draws now. See, when you see that, you can look up because our redemption draws now. But this started off with the people going led away captive in all nations. And this how it's going in because it centers around Israel. These four beasts, as long as they ruling, we're going to be in slavery. And we the priests that need to tell everybody else about God, we can't do it right like we need to. That's why the Lord going to fix it. Let's go to Zach, uh, Romans 11. Romans 11. I read this last week concerning you got to understand that it centers around Israel. That's why the people that follow this guy, Herbert Armstrong, they don't have to understand because they all mixed up on who Israel is. He done told them America is Israel and Great Britain is Israel. What kind of poppycock is that? That don't make no sense. They Gentile nations. Been living good because they, it's the time of the Gentiles. These are people that came from the, 
from out from the Roman Empire. That's why I say America, Britain, all of them, they just a leaf on the tree of the Roman Empire. Romans 11 and 1. Go ahead. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. See, that's what people think, that he did away with his people. But we just in captivity until the times of the Gentiles is up. And Paul had to tell who, none other than the Romans, because that's why you got the Pope in Rome now. Because he just said, yeah, well, he, you know, God stopped using them. He using me. When did the church transfer from Israel to Rome? And that's going to be his final mistake when he leave Rome and try to authenticate his rulership and move to Jerusalem. That's going to be his last mistake. So have God cast away Israel, ha, 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 cast away his people? What's the answer? God forbid. God forbid. Why? For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, uh -huh. of the tribe of Benjamin. People act like there's something wrong with saying you from a, you're an Israelite from the nation of Israel. Like that's a bad word. Well, Paul said it here. It's important. It don't mean you automatically say you got to do God's will. But God started with Israel. He said, I'm an Israelite. He didn't cast Israel away. Verse 2. God have not cast away his people which he foreknew. He have not done it. He telling the Romans of all people that. Because they were saying it back then that, look, this we, we going to run this thing now. We run. They was trying to get uppity with Paul. Look at Paul. You did good, but uh, we're we going to take it from here. You know, because y'all kind of Israel kind of messed up. Paul said, I know we messed up, but still, we still the priests. That's why I'm preaching to you all. That's why y'all didn't come bring the word to me. I brought the word to you is what Paul is letting them know. God of not cast away his people, which he fought. That's why he specified I'm an Israelite. If he had cast us away, I wouldn't have been the one preaching to you. Told him what tribe he was from, the tribe of Benjamin. He's not cast away his people, which he foreknew. That's good. We're going to skip that. Go to verse 25 because he summed it up. And this is what is going to come to pass in the end. But in order for it to come to pass, he got, Jesus got to knock this fourth beast off. 25, go ahead. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit. What mystery? Concerning Israel. Don't be wise. Don't get puffed up, Romans. And that's exactly what didn't happen. That's why, hey, I can't let the Pope tell I can't tell the Pope nothing. He got all the money. He got all the colleges, all the hospitals, all the doctor degrees. How he going to listen to me? He not going to listen to me. He think Israel don't matter no more. He ain't going to try to say he Israel. He know he not Israel, but he think it didn't change. But he didn't got, they didn't got, did exactly what Paul said don't do. I would not, brother, that you be ignorant of this mystery lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That what? That blindness in part has happened to Israel. Until when? Not forever. Until when? Until the fullness of the Gentiles be coming. Until the times of the Gentiles is up. Jesus said we're going to be led away captive and into all nations. And Jerusalem is going to be trodden down of the Gentiles. See, this is the time of the Gentiles. That's why the Romans rule. That's why you got Vatican City. That's why you got all the Gentile nations doing, running everything. They let little, little Hamite African nations have rulership, but hey, they control it all. Anytime they want to go take anything from anybody, they go do it, right? Because these are the times of the Gentiles. So don't, he said, Israel is blind in part to the fullness of the Gentiles be coming till their time is up. And when that time is up, the sky going to roll back, brothers and sisters, and here come Jesus putting down the Gentiles. See, the Romans are Gentiles, and they so shrewd with it, they don't just say, look, it only can be Italians run this thing. They say, no, nah, we share the wealth with all the Gentile brothers. So you could be Greek, you could be Swedish, a Swiss, you could be Ireland. They, hey, they slick. They like, look, we all, we all Gentile. We're going to run it together. See, they didn't want to put this political thing. Landscape that America know. They put that on the map. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And so all Israel shall be saved. Mm -hmm. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away 
ungodliness from Jacob. That's Jesus. But that it can't happen to the towns of the Gentiles. Though. Let's look at it. Go to uh, Zechariah 1. It was already foretold. See, all four of the beasts in Daniel 7 were all Gentiles. We just under the fourth one, the last Gentile ruler, and they're going to take it to the end. But all four of them were Gentiles. Zechariah 1 and 14. See, the Lord had kicked us out, and he'd been agonizing it over, and he got to reverse it. Go ahead. 14 so the and 1 and 14, Zechariah 1 and 14. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. Mm -hmm. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. Heathen is just mean the Gentiles were nations. He said he's jealous for Jerusalem. Because remember, we go into slavery. They took over everything, even what God had. But God let them do it because he, fed, he was fed up with us. But they took it over doing it how they want to do it. But eventually, the time is going to be up. And when the times of the Gentiles are up, here comes Jesus to put down the fourth beast and establish his kingdom forever. So, the question was asked. He said, he said he's jealous over Jerusalem and Zion with great jealousy. He displeased with the heathen that is at ease for what? For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. They helped forward the affliction. Forward the affliction. They made it worse. So I wasn't mad at that mad, but they didn't went overboard with it. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. I am returned to Jerusalem uh -huh. with mercy. Go ahead. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, uh -huh. and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion. He gonna yet comfort Zion. Go ahead. And shall yet choose Jerusalem. But Jerusalem, hey, that's the city people fighting over now, but that's gonna change when Jesus come. Go ahead. Then... Then lifted I up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. Four horns. See, this is the four Gentile rulers. The last one is Rome. Go ahead. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Uh-huh. These are the horns that are scattered. These are the kingdoms of the Gentiles. He going to tell you, go ahead. And the Lord shewed me four carpenters. See, these these four angels, because the Lord worked through angels. They're going to start it off in Revelation. But go ahead. Then said I, uh -huh. what came these to do? What do these carpenters come? I see the horns that messed Israel, Jerusalem, and Jeru Judah up. What these carpenters going to do? See, it all centers around Israel, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And he spake, saying, these are the horns which has scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head. That's the four beasts that scattered. Go ahead. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles. To cast out the horns of the Gentiles. They're going to kick them out. Go ahead. Which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah uh -huh. to scatter. See, and that's who's been scattering us. See, that's why I said it don't matter who president, who doing what, you a slave. And can't even go home yet. Don't even know where home is. You so much a slave. You really a slave. You don't even know where home at. You know you messed up. But it started. The final nail in the coffin was when Rome scattered us in 70 AD. We've been slaves ever since. But the Lord going to put an end to it. Let's go to uh, Revelation 17. Revelation 17, and pick it up at verse 1. And 17 and 1. Go ahead. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, why is the great whore? Because this revived Roman Empire. Is only being revived because of the religious aspects of it. That's what kept it from dying out. 
the little horn. Go ahead. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. See, the kings of the earth and went along with it. So though Rome haven't had no military might, they didn't had spiritual might, mind control, false religion, and the kings then went along with it. That's why everybody, all these nations, got the same religion for the most part. Go ahead. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. See, they drunk with this false teaching that come from this whore. And, and where she come from again? It's not the Roman, it's not the Catholic Church. It's the Roman Catholic Church that come from Rome. Go ahead. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet covered beast. See, the woman don't get here but by way of the beast. You don't have no Roman Catholic Church without the Roman Empire. The woman come riding the beast. That's how she get here. That's how you, now, we born into this world. We look over in Vatican City. It's a guy with all kind of power said, I'm Holy Father. Listen to me. That's why. Go ahead. Full of names of blasphemy. But is it from God? I don't think so. Everything they saying is contrary. Down to worshiping Mother Mary. Not in the Bible. Go ahead. Having seven heads and ten horns. Seven heads and ten. You still dealing with a kingdom. Seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold. This the colors of the other of the church. Purple and scarlet. You see them? A lot of times you see the priests, if they don't have on white for looking at righteousness, they got on purple, red and scarlet. Purple. Red and purple. Scarlet and purple. That's their colors. That's what she arrayed in. But people try to separate. They say, well, the church is, uh, the man is the man from Rome. But the, I had these people from Arms, I'm like, well, it's Germany. It's the, look, it's he running it. The man is running it, and he got a conglomerate of nations that he using. So he said, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having what? Having a golden cup in her hand uh -huh. full of abominations mm -hmm. and filthiness of her fornication. This is not pretty. This is ugly. She got a golden cup, but it's garbage in the cup. It's false religion. That's how they done kept you down. That's how they even kept a measure of power in this world through their little horn. Not a, 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 a physical temporal leader, a religious leader. Go ahead. And upon our forehead was a name written. Uh-huh. Mystery Babylon. See, go back to Babylon, the first Gentile rulership, Nebuchadnezzar. That's all it is. They just kept going what he started. That's why it's mystery Babylon, and Babylon means to confuse. Hey, the world is confused. The world is drunk, he said. That's what he said at verse 1. Or verse 2, he said, the kings of the earth committed fornication. I mean, they sleeping with this woman, religious-wise. They laying with her. They going along with this. It's all about money. Hey, everybody in the bed together now. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Everybody drunk. You try to tell them, look, God, Lord going to set a kingdom on earth. You drunk thinking you going to heaven. <laughs> you try to tell them, look, you got to uh, keep the dietary law. No, I can just pray over you drunk. Go ahead, verse 5. Upon the forehead name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the what? The mother of Harlem. The mother church. She the originator of it all. All roads do lead to Rome. Go ahead. An abomination of the earth. Ooh, this is not pretty. But they can't, somebody get mad. Why are you talking about, it got to be talking about somebody. It's in the Holy Bible. Shouldn't we read it and try to figure it out and understand? It? And we know it. Lord and showed it to us. Verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Oh, she been killing saints. Same old story, brother and sister. Ain't gonna got a little more killing to do. You can see from a lesson like this. Hey, they be looking for us after a while. <laughs> but we ain't care. We don't care. Because we trying to get eternal life. We trying to get a body like God. That's you can right. kill this body. That's why you think Jesus said, don't worry about them to kill the body. But can't kill, can't put you in eternal damnation. That's right. 
fear the Lord who not only can kill this body, he can put you in the lake of fire. We're trying to get a body like God. So we ain't, we ain't worried about this. I saw, but she drunken. She's been killing saints for a long time. Even the actual ones that killed Jesus, right? That's right. And got some more killing to do. That's what this how this thing go in. You think they're gonna let us tell the truth, kill this lie, 2,000 year old lie without fighting back? Oh, they're gonna fight. But they can't win in the end. Because the Lord is going to rule. She drunk with the blood of the saints and with, the, and with what? And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. You mean Jesus got some martyrs down to the end, brothers? What we read in Revelation 6, we read that these saints were slain for the word of God and the testimony which they have down to the sky roll back. Go ahead. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Even John said, whoa, this beast is something else. They calling him. Go ahead. And the angel said unto me, wherefore didst, didst thou marvel? Uh -huh. I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. Which is the church. And of the beast. That which is the kingdom her, itself. Which all had, come from Rome. I'm going to tell you the mystery of the woman. It's a mystery to this day, isn't it? We know. The world don't. You worried about Donald Trump. This is what you better be worried about. I tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that cared. The beast is the kingdom. That's how the woman rode in. That's the horse she rode in on. Go ahead. We have the seven heads and ten horns. Same thing. We know we're talking about the same one. Go ahead, verse 8. Back to where we started at. The beast that thou saw uh -huh. was and is not. Where was it? It was a mighty empire back in Jesus' time. It lost the power but held on to a tiny bit, got a deadly wound, inflicted, but stayed alive, wouldn't die, wouldn't go away. Kept a little control through religion. It was and is not, and what is getting ready to do right now as we speak. Go ahead. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. It's coming back from obscurity. Go ahead. And go into perdition. And it's going to go into destroy. It's going to kill like it's going out of stuff. They're going to tell you what to do. You don't do it. You dead. Go ahead. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. Uh-huh. Whose names were not written in the book of life. Uh-huh. From the foundation of the earth. Uh-huh. When they the do world. what? When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. There it is. Rome was a mighty empire. It is not. But yet. How are you going to be is not and yet is? That's what we're talking about didn't go nowhere. Just been laying low. Keep going, verse 9. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. Here's the mind which hath wisdom. Who got some wisdom? Let's see. Keep going. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. See, it's known that Rome was built on seven famous hills. There's a bunch of hills, but it's seven famous hills. Keep going. And there are seven kings. Uh-huh, seven kings because it had 10 in Daniel 7. Three got plucked up, that left seven, and the seventh one is going to work with the little horn. Them two going to put it all back together. They going to heal it. Go ahead. Five are fallen, mm -hmm. and one and one is. Well, eventually six had to fall. Go ahead. And the other is not yet come. And he here now, we just waiting on him to appear. Go ahead and do what he got to do. Go ahead. And when he cometh, mm -hmm. he must continue a short space. Keep going. And the beast that was and is not. There you go again. The beast that was and is not and what? Even he is the eighth uh -huh. and is of the seven uh -huh. and goeth into perdition. This going to this gonna be such a great feat. It's almost like another kingdom, though it is still that Roman head that got wounded. Go ahead. And the ten horn which thou saw. Now these are the ten that's on this revived empire. Go ahead. Are ten kings. Uh-huh. Which have received no kingdom as yet. Well, they, they in it now, but go ahead. But receive power as kings. One hour with the beast. Notice it's ten kings. Ten sovereign nations going to operate as one. This is what's going to make Rome healed. They're going to say, we with you. Whatever you want to do with it. We got armies, resources. This is what it's going to make. See, Rome in itself couldn't do nothing. The city or Italy, it couldn't do nothing. 
But when you put these 10 together, you put Germany, you put Greece, you put France, you put all these kingdoms, some strong, and they got some little ones that's going to be a part of it. Daniel 10, Daniel 2 tell you that. So, but the bottom line is, he say, they're going to receive power one hour with the beast. What they going to do? 13. These have one mind. Uh-huh. And she'll give their power and their strength into the beast. They got one mind and giving it to the beast. See, he don't have to have a military. He got these going to give their power and strength to these 10 nations with their 10 leaders. Go ahead. How, how far is this going to go? Go ahead. These shall make war with the land. Wait a minute. They're going to fight Jesus? That's how this thing ended. That lets you know this is what it's about. These shall make war with the lamb. Go ahead. And the lamb shall overcome them. Because who is he? For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. Okay, go to Daniel, the eighth chapter. Lord of lords and king of kings. Daniel, the eighth chapter. Daniel 8, Daniel 8 and 23. Read it when you get there. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not of his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, uh -huh. and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Down to the end. It said a lot of time of this Gentile king. That's what it's talking about. This man, this is this little horn. He going to rise up and he going to destroy wonderfully, it said. And again, as always, he's most concerned with the holy people. It said he shall destroy the mighty. He don't care how much strength you got. And the holy people. And and he understand what this is all about. That's why the Lord going to deal with him when he come. Mighty and holy people. That's what I said in verse 24, right? Yes. Go ahead, 25. And through his policies also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. He going to cause, he going to have some magic from Satan and armies to boot. He going to really be something to be reckoned with. He going to, because you want to see a miracle. Hey, the Lord going to let Satan give it to you. Because the Lord going to say either you're going to believe what I'm saying or you going to listen to the devil. So through his policy, he's going to cause craft to prosper. In. But notice, this is the one that's leading the 10. The man from Rome is leading these 10 nations, and they're going to go into battle with the Lord because the Lord coming to put them down. He got to put this beast down so the saints can rule. He's going to cause craft to prosper in his hand, and what he doing? And he shall magnify himself. In his heart. Oh, that's what he's been doing all along. He's going to take it to the max at the end, the last three and a half years. Go ahead. And by peace shall destroy many. By peace. He's a different type of king. He destroying you through peace, talking peace to you. But if you don't do what he say, he want to kill you. See, right now they can't do it. Right now they got little parochial schools and all of that. They, don't, they can't make you do it, but they want to. That's why if you go to one of their parochial schools or some of that, they say, well, you know, you got to come to mass. Mm -hmm. You, you want to have your kids in a good school, you know, because the public school is not no good. But if you come to our school, you got to take heed. See, they try to control. See, they get a little more stronger when you get and try to get into their stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to one of the hospitals. Always you got to end up going to a hospital with Saint somebody, mm -hmm. Saint this or Saint, because they got all the money in the world. Mm -hmm. Saint somebody, Saint Mary, Saint Margaret. You go to their hospital, they can't make you do nothing, but they got all the, you know. My wife was giving birth in the Catholic hospital. She got tired of looking at the cross on the wall. She's like, get that thing down. Because <laughs> they're going to put their stuff in your face. But they want to put it all the way in your face. That's what they want to get back. They want to make Rome great again. That's what they want to do. 
pick it up at 25 again. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. That's witchcraft. He magnify himself in his heart and by peace going to destroy many. But the last end of this 25th verse says it all. What? Uh, Go ahead, read through. Okay. <laughs> and he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace, he shall destroy many. By peace, that's important, but go ahead. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. Wait a minute, he gonna stand up against Christ himself? That's who the prince of princes is. But that's not a surprise, being that we read he got 10 nations that's gonna fight him in Revelation 17. They gonna get their power and strength to him. That's what's healing the beast, brothers and sisters. They giving their power and strength to him. That's why we read in, in Revelation 6, it said they got complete power over the fourth part of earth. They can kill you with the sword. Not only that, they can kill you with hunger. You can't buy a sale unless you listen to him. He's going to be able to tell you. He can control the economy, kill you with hunger. You can't go out and get nothing to eat because you go out and get something. They're going to say, did you take the mark? Did you, did you bow down to the image today? And you go, well, I just want some bread. You can't do it. That's some control. That's some power. But it's not by him. That's why at verse, uh, read 24 one more time. Go ahead. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. See, that lets you know, like a brother was telling me, see, Rome, Rome ain't even got no army. I know, dummy. They use other people's armies. We see they got 10 that's going to work with them. No, they don't have no army. No, not enough significance. Even the Pope, only thing he got the Swiss Guard. They can't hurt nobody. But when you get these ten nations on his side, his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He got power from other armies. He got power from Satan. But hey, his army, when they do what they do, what you say, they your armies, right? That's right. And then it said. 25, through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. That's witchcraft. He shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. That's at the end. This is going to the end. We keep seeing this fourth beast is going to survive to the Lord because once this fourth beast is done, it's time for the saints day. So it says he shall stand up against the prince of princes, but what's going to be happening? But he shall be broken without hand. He's going to be broken without hand. That lets you know it's the Lord. The Lord ain't got to grab him. He ain't got to shoot a missile at him. He ain't got to do nothing. Jesus just going to speak the word, broken without hand. He's the stone cut out of the mountains without hand. Let's go Thessalonians. Let's show you this. Because this is how it's going to end, brother and sister. That's why we know what's happening. We're not worried about Donald Trump and what, what America does or don't do. We know how this thing going. America backpedaling anyway. They got a backpedal so this beast can be healed all the way. They already got it together in, in the, the European Union. They got 20-something nations, but in the end, it's going to be 10 go along with the whole thing. But they got, they, they, they getting strong with all these nations. They got the euro where they all use that currency. Greeks used to have their own drachma, yeah. dollar. Hey, they got rid of it. None of them nations use their own currency. That's why Britain didn't go along with it. Because they still use the pound. But all the other ones, Rome, Italy, uh, Greece, uh, France, Germany, they all use the euro now. And America trying to keep it down because America want to stay the top dog. It ain't. It won't last. It can't. They can't last. It's gonna happen the way the Lord called it. We already know the end of the story. So what he say here? Second Thessalonians two, because this one is gonna end up when the man try to take over everywhere and move to the Holy Land. Two and one. Go ahead. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by our gathering together unto him. Uh huh. We beseech you what? Go ahead. That ye be not soon shaken in mind mm -hmm. or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So don't let nobody tell you the day of Christ can come any day. Jesus is coming for sure. 
but he can't come any day. He can't come tomorrow. He can't come. Only thing he can do, he can come for us anytime. We could die anytime. So that, you know, just because he can't make his second coming. I know he can't make his second coming. That don't mean you get lax. Say, well, brother lied. Say, he ain't going to make his second coming. Maybe I go sin a little bit and come on back. Look, you can go sin tonight. He can come for you tomorrow. You be dead and gone. So, but as far as his second coming, that can't happen for some years. Oh, because all of this stuff that we're reading about, the beast got to still be fully healed. So this is what Paul is dictating, where somebody won't tell, you don't go for the okie doke, somebody tell you, well, uh, the Lord is coming on May 17th. And you say, what about the beast, you know, being healed? Where is that at? Oh, no, no that's happening. You know, he coming. No, they lying to you. So Paul said, look, we beg you, don't, verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind to be troubled neither by spirit. I don't care any kind of way. Nor by word, nor by letter asked from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Don't let anybody think you, it's, at, it's, it's imminent, about to come today or tomorrow, next week. December 14th. Uh-uh, it ain't, it's not getting ready to happen until this stuff happens. What? Three. Let no man deceive you by any means. Always a warning about deception, but keep reading. For that day shall not come. That the Lord cannot come back. Go ahead. Except there come a falling away first. Uh-huh, falling away. Terrible falling away. Which don't nobody know about the word, so that can happen. But we still waiting on this last end of the Gentile dynasty, which is what? And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See, he got to show his hand. The son of perdition got to show his hand. The son of destruction. Then we read that the beast coming out of the bottomless pit and going to go into perdition. That's destruction. How are we going to recognize him? We know him now. But how, do, how he going to present himself to the world? Verse 4. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Mm -hmm. Or that is worship, uh -huh. so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he gonna move to the temple that they build in Jerusalem. That's that's on his way, and then he gonna move there and take it over and trot it down for the last three and a half years, according to Revelation eleven, forty and two months. He gonna trot it down, and now see Jesus can't come to that happen. We got to have three and a half years, a time, times and a half, 40 and two months, 1260 days, however you read. We got to have three and a half years of great tribulation perpetuated by Rome. Then Jesus come. Notice when he come. We didn't read, brother and sister, he got 10 nations and they going to stand up and fight the lamb, right? We didn't read that the man himself, he going to destroy wonderfully by peace and he's going to stand up against the prince of princes one more time let's make sure skip over to verse eight uh seven and go ahead for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now let it will let mm -hmm. until he be taken out of the way uh-huh go ahead and when they shall and when and then shall they that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. You're going to know him when he moves into the temple. And when the time is up, the time is up. Times of the Gentiles will be up. But then shall that wicked be revealed. When he do that, go ahead. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Uh -huh. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Jesus is going to destroy this man when he come. He on a specific mission to destroy this man. Now, let's go to uh, Daniel 7. He going to destroy this man and in turn destroy this beast that's being healed now, which is wrong. Daniel 7 and 9. Go ahead, read it. I beheld until till the thrones were cast down. See, he gonna, the Lord going to cast these thrones down, starting with Rome. But go ahead. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Uh-huh whose garment was white as snow uh -huh. and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Uh -huh. His throne was like the fiery flame mm -hmm. and his wheels as burning fire. Uh -huh. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Uh -huh. Thousands, thousands ministered into him uh -huh. and, th and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. Uh-huh. This is at the end. Go ahead. The judgment was set mm -hmm. and the books 
Well, okay. And the books was a week down the judge, but he gonna show you what happened. Go ahead. I beheld then because of the voice of the great waters. Which, great words. The great words which the horn spake. The horn spake. He been speaking. It's the little one, but go ahead. I beheld even till the beast was slain. Oh, the beast was slain. See, it's getting healed now, but it's only going to get healed to get slain because the Lord going to run this when it's done. Go ahead. And his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Because the Lord coming in flame and fire. Let's get to it. Revelation 13. Revelation 13. And pick it up at 11. Read it when you get there. Revelation 13 and 11. Go ahead. And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Notice this is the this showing you the leadership. It's not another kingdom, all that. Look, Rome is it. Rome is the fourth kingdom. It's going to be revived. But this is showing you who running Rome. That's what this beast is symbolizing, the leadership. That's why I say it got two horns because it's a two-headed system, a two-leadership, a temporal leader and a false a religious man. But go ahead. And he exercised all the power of the first beast. See, before that's him. the power structure of Rome, the revived Rome. It's not an emperor, it's two horns, two leaders. And they speaking like they're working for the Lord, but they, I mean, they looking like they're working, looking like a lamb, but they speaking because they work for Satan. He exercised all the power of the first beast, which is Rome, and do what? Cause it what? It cause the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. Whose what? Whose deadly wound was healed. Whose deadly wound was healed. See, we ain't looking for something new. We looking for an old one coming back. Go ahead. And he doth great wonders. So great wonders. Go ahead. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That's that craft. Go ahead. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth uh -huh. by the means of of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. See, he doing miracles. Crab prospered in his hand. Lion wonders. Go ahead. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast mm -hmm. which had the wound by a sword and did live. I uh, had the wound by a sword but did live. Rome didn't die. It got, it got wounded. Go ahead. And he had power to give life into the image of the beast, uh -huh. that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Oh, it's going to be rough. You got to worship an image for sure. Go ahead. And he causes all, both small and great, mm -hmm. rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. That's the mark of the beast. But we know it's the Roman Empire being revived. You got to take this mark. And he going to make this image come to life. Everybody going to believe him then except us. Those with understanding. Yeah, there go that lie. Go ahead. And that no man might buy or sell. Told you he was going to be able to destroy you with hunger. You can't even buy or sell. You got to prove you worship him. Go ahead. Say if he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And what's the number? Everybody heard of this, but we know this is one of his titles adding up in Roman numerals. Go ahead. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, mm -hmm. for it is the number of a man. Mm -hmm. And his number is 600, three score, and six. See, they used to say Ronald Reagan. See, we always get caught up on the wrong thing. They, back in the day, I remember when Ronald Reagan became president. You're looking at the wrong thing. It's not even America. Oh, that's the Antichrist. Oh, 666. Look at his name, Ronald Wilson Reagan. I remember people saying that. Now you're worried about Trump. Trump, not it. Get that out your head. All roads lead to Rome. Let's go to Revelation 19, because now the Lord going to put this beast down, and we going to reign supreme. 19 and 11. Here come Jesus again. This guy got to roll back, and he got to deal with, with this revived, this healed beast. Go ahead. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Here come Jesus. Go ahead. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Uh-huh. And in righteousness. In righteousness. What are you doing? Loving everybody? Go ahead. He does judge and make war. In righteousness. It's righteous what he doing, but it's not pretty. 
In righteousness, he doth judge and make war. It didn't say in righteousness, he doth rapture us all to heaven. <laughs> didn't say that. You got to know what he doing. Go ahead. His eyes were as flame as a flame hey, he of to fire. Get, vengeance is on his mind. Go ahead. And on his head were many crowns. Many crowns. King of kings. Go ahead. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Uh-huh. And he was clothed with a vest dipped in blood. Ah, uh, he killing. Go ahead. And his name is called the Word of God. Word of God. This is Christ. He was in the beginning. But he coming to kill, and he got to start with the leaders of this healed empire, this healed beast. Go ahead. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, mm -hmm. clothed in fine linen. You don't come with all this firepower, angels, all kind of angels. And you coming to rapture somebody. Go ahead. White and clean. Mm -hmm. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Out of his mouth. He just speak the word. Sharp sword. That's why I say he going to kill the man without laying a hand on him. He just speak it. Go ahead. That with it he should smite the nations. Oh, he going to smite the nations. Right here. Go ahead. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. It's time for him to rule. And he going to let the saints rule with him. That's why I want to be a real saint. That's why I... Stick with what the Lord is saying in the scripture. Because this when our day going to come to shine. It ain't our time to shine now. It's the times of the Gentile. It's the time of the beast. Go ahead. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God. Keep going. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of King and Lord of Lords. He's going to show you in a minute. That's for real. Go ahead. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, uh -huh. saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heaven, mm -hmm. come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. It's going to be a good supper for these beasts, these birds. Go ahead. That you may eat the flesh of kings. The Lord going to kill like it's no tomorrow. Go ahead. And the flesh of captains. Uh -huh. And the flesh of mighty men. Uh -huh. And the flesh of horse. That's right. And them that sat on them. Uh -huh. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond, uh -huh. both small and great. That's right. Go ahead. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth mm -hmm. and their armies gathered together to make war against him. Oh, he but saw the beast. And the beast got everybody wanting to fight him, but he got a conglomerate of nations anyway. This is the same thing we've been reading. They're going to fight Jesus. If you don't get nothing else out of this, get that. I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies. This is the time you want to go AWOL, brothers and sisters. If you might tell you, look, we're going up to Armageddon by the Middle East, and we're going to look. <laughs> I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his, how many times we got to read it? Revelation 17, it said the 10 nations, they going to get a strength to the beast and they going to make war against the lamb. Go ahead. And the beast was taken. Now the beast was taken. Now this is start off, you know, the beast is the kingdom. Also the beast is the military leader of the kingdom. So you got to use him, you know, recognize him when he separated. But it's still, it's still all the kingdom. But sometimes he referred to the emperor type man ask the, the beast too when he get individually because remember we saw that this is a two-headed leadership system two horns on this kingdom this revived roman empire not just an emperor you got an emperor which he called the beast here but you got the little horn a spiritual leader he said the beast was taken go ahead and with him the false prophet and with him the false prophet these two religious religious leader and the emperor type man go ahead that wrought miracles before him. The false prophet did the miracles. Go ahead. Which, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast. He deceived a lot of folks. Go ahead. And them that worshipped his image. Mm -hmm. And these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. He putting them in hell fire immediately. He ain't going to bother to kill them wake them up. You're going to hell now. Because they straight, they've been killing God's saints wonderfully amazing they're gonna kill amazingly and you worried about donald trump go ahead and the rem and the remnant 
were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. And the remainder were slain with the sword of him that sat on the horse. Go ahead. Which sword proceeded, uh, proceeded out of his mouth, mm -hmm. and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Revelation 11, one verse, verse 15, and this is it. Because this is where we start off. We threw in Revelation 22. They going to remember now who the boss is. Because the Lord is the governor among the nations. And he about to rule this thing. This is what this means. But he got to put down the fourth beast. But in order for him to put down the fourth beast, it got to be healed and come back to full-fledged power. 11 and 15, go ahead. And the seven angels sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world. Notice he said kingdoms plural because the fourth beast is made up of a conglomerate of nations with their own kings. They just joining in and giving all their power to this, this old system to heal it. But it's they individual kings with, with their sovereign nation, but they didn't let go their sovereignty to join in. It's the United States of Europe. It's the revived Roman Empire. That's why he said, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world, wherever they at now, don't matter. What are they now? Are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Time for the Lord to rule. You ain't going to heaven. He come to take this thing over and give it to the saints. This is what we waiting on. They are the kings of this world. I become the kings of our Lord and of his Christ. That's when that seventh angel blow his trumpet. And how long? Go ahead. And he shall reign. Forever and ever. And I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. God. We had an announcement. I'm going to mention a uh, couple of things. Go ahead with the regular announcement. Our prayer is that the eyes of you, your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of all our lessons are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick your DVDs and CDs up at the podium next Sabbath. Please tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations. Please join us at our other study classes, Question and Answer Bible Study, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central via conference call line at 712-432-1620, access, access code 609910. Also stream live from our website, thykingdomcome7.com. Children's Bible class ages 4 through 12 every Sabbath at 12 noon. Teen Forum Bible class ages 13 to 19 every other Sabbath, Saturday at 5 p.m. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptismal list at the podium and or speak with Brother Oscar. Following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance. Nothing tight-fitting, overly baggy, sagging, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove hats and all head covering, and women should wear a head covering, such as a hat or a scarf, according to 1 Corinthians 11, 1 through 7. If your young children become noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her to the TV monitor area in the rear of the class. Any tithes and or free will offerings should be put in an offering envelope and placed in an offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you until next Sabbath. Peace. 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 Okay, we got a baptism tomorrow. So after class, immediately at the end of class, we're going to have a baptism. Anybody else in the rest can sign up. But that'll be tomorrow. Uh, right after the lesson. Also, we do the monthly fast uh, every every month before the end of the Lord's month. So that's coming up this Thursday evening, Thursday night, which is January 26th, sundown to sundown. 
That'll be the next monthly fast. That's a good time to keep them in mind and pray for those that, that uh, you know, in need. Pray for us that the Lord continue to guide us to spread his gospel because that's our desire to spread the truth and wake people up before it's too late. Pray for us on that, that the Lord guide us in doing that. Also, you know, uh, you got some people, you know anybody ill or sick, definitely pray for them. I mentioned Brother Andrew. He is doing a lot better from what I hear, doing better anyway. Should be leaving the hospital, maybe going to rehab. But he's doing better, those that uh, know Brother Andrew. Um, sister in New Jersey, she saw us on TV a long time ago. Her name is Loretta Mitchell. She asked for prayer. She had, you know, been in the hospital, had a procedure, asked for prayer. Her and her brother, she live in New Jersey. Her brother, Cornell, they, they watch us faithfully, been watching us for years since they saw us on the travel channel. He live in uh, Rockaway, which is near in Brooklyn. Uh, the Bronx, uh, you know, I asked you to pray for him a while ago. But uh, Sister Loretta, keep her in your prayers from New Jersey. And uh, like I said, uh, the uh, fast is a good time to remember others in your prayers. We need all the fast and praying and fasting we can take living in this world. So with that said, I don't think it's nothing else. We're going to stand and face the room and close out. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done in earth. In earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us from evil. From evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy endure forever. For his mercy endure forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy endure forever. For his mercy endure forever. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.